ghostly creeping through the waters of the world. What are ghost ships? Welcome to Hunter Road Media. I'm author and ghost story and Mike Ricksecker. Explore the connected universe with us. Ever since humanity started sailing the high seas, there have been reports of strange phenomena and supernatural activity out on the open waters. Some of the most unusual involve ghost ships, those enigmatic vessels many times left abandoned, and their associated hauntings and unsolved mysteries. Let's take a look at some of these tales. The American merchant vessel Mary Celeste set sail from New York to Italy in November 1872 and was discovered a month later drifting east of the Azores as a ghost ship with no one on board. What happened to those aboard the Mary Celeste is still today one of the biggest maritime mysteries ever. Those who had left New York aboard the ship included Benjamin S. Briggs, his wife Sarah, their two-year-old daughter, and eight crew members. When the Mary Celeste was discovered, the ship was undamaged and loaded with six months worth of food and water, along with several significant personal possessions. There was no sign of violence. The captain's navigational equipment and most of his papers were missing. There was no food prepared or in preparation, and a lifeboat had been taken. It looked like the family and crew had made a rather orderly abandonment of the Mary Celeste. But why? Even the ship's log was cryptic, just a simple entry at 8 a.m nine days prior to the finding of the ship. Several theories have been postulated as to what happened to the Mary Celeste, including an insurance scam gone wrong, a dubious murder plot, several natural phenomenon theories, including iceberg sightings, sea quakes, sea monsters like a giant squid, mystical experiences connected with the Giza pyramids in Atlantis, and various forms of supernatural and paranormal activity. What really happened to the Mary Celeste and its inhabitants, we'll likely never know. After her salvage, nobody wanted the ghost ship, believing it to be cursed. When someone finally did take a chance on Mary Celeste, her final years were rife with crew illness, death, and finally fraud when it was purposely crashed into a reef and sunk in 1885. The USS Bay Chimo was a 1,300-ton cargo steamer built in Sweden in 1914 that became known as Alaska's ghost ship after it was abandoned in 1931 and was seen eerily creeping along the seas of northern Alaska for the next 40 years. Loaded with fur and completing a trade run, the Bay Chimo, the largest ship ever to cross into the Arctic Circle at that time, became embedded in a pack of ice on October 1. Not the first time for the vessel. Since they were only a half mile from the town of Barrow, the crew disembarked the ship and took shelter in the town for the next two days. However, by the time the crew returned, the ship had broken free of the ice and was out floating on its own. They tried several times to retrieve the Bay Chimo, including a time when they built a shelter near the grounded ship when it ran into another pack of ice on October 15th. Over a month later, a terrible blizzard dislodged the Bay Chimo and it disappeared again into the snowy night. The ship was found once more, depleted of its cargo of furs, and abandoned for good. The crew believed that the Bay Chimo, in the condition it was in, wouldn't last the winter. However, it lasted another 38 years. Crewless, the ghostly Bay Chimo drifted the waters of the Arctic, periodically becoming stuck in ice and later being freed to creep through the night again. Several groups of people tried to salvage the Hulk, but either didn't have the right equipment or were driven back by the weather that caused her to become abandoned to begin with. The legend of the Bay Chimo grew with each sighting, the ghost of an old ship haunting the waters. The last known sighting of the USS Bay Chimo was in 1969 by a group of native Alaskan Inuit, once again stuck in the ice 38 years after she was first abandoned. It's unknown when she finally sunk, or if the ghost of the Bay Chimo is still out there to this day. Also in Alaska, the passenger liner SS Princess Sophia ran aground on the Vanderbilt Reef on October 24, 1918, and a day later it and the 364 people aboard the ship disappeared into the icy waters. The only survivor, sadly, was an English setter dog. The Princess Sophia left Skagway, Alaska, en route to Juneau, more than three hours behind schedule, and its captain quickly navigated the Lynn Canal, where the reef lies, perhaps an attempt to make up for lost time as the weather deteriorated, and eventually turned into a snowstorm. Within the storm, the ship strayed off course and caught itself on the reef. Distress calls went out and a rescue flotilla out of Juneau was put together, 
but wind and waves forced the Princess Sophia further up onto the reef. It was a precarious situation for any rescue. At low tide, the ship was surrounded by rocks, and at high tide, the swells were so powerful that if any lifeboats were to make an attempt, it would hit the rocks as the waves surged up and down. Captain Leonard Locke was criticized for warning off rescue boats until better conditions arrived and had wireless communication with Captain J.W. Ledbetter of the USS Cedar, who later stated he never observed conditions that would have allowed the evacuation of the Princess Sophia on the 25th. Rescue boats approached again on the morning of the 26th, but all that could be seen of the Princess Sophia at that time was its foremast sticking out of the water. With it still snowing, she was apparently washed off the reef the night beforehand, the rocks ripping open the hole and sinking the ship. The discovered bodies were taken to Juno, where local businesses that were turned into makeshift morgues are still haunted to this day. These hauntings include screams and icy breaths and apparitions of the passengers of the Princess Sophia. The Arctic Exploration Expedition, led by Captain Sir John Franklin in 1845, was supposed to chart new courses through the presumed Northwest Passage, but after two years of hearing no word from the expedition, search parties were sent for Franklin's two missing ships, the HMS Erebus and the HMS Terror. They had seemingly vanished off the face of the Earth, the last sighting of them by a whaling ship west of Greenland. What happened to these ships? In 1850 on Beachy Island near the entrance of the Northwest Passage, search teams discovered their first clue to the mystery, graves of three sailors who had died during the first winter, an ominous sign so early in the expedition. Other expeditions weren't so lucky in discovering information and encountered their own perils. During one of these in 1852, four of five ships had to be abandoned in pack ice, including the HMS Resolute, which was later recovered intact by an American whaler, and the timbers of which were used to build the Resolute desk, which now sits in the Oval Office in the White House. More expeditions were sent out over the years, and in 1859 on King William Island, the biggest clue to the fate of the Franklin expedition was found in a handwritten note in a stone cairn. It stated that after the crew spent their first winter on Beachy Island, they sailed 350 miles south to King William Island and spent their second winter there. The message ended with the words, all well, but their tale doesn't end there. Scrawled along the borders of the note was a second message, a full year later, which stated they were stranded a second winter on King William Island, that the ice had remained solid through the summer of 1847, and the ships remained trapped. Captain Franklin had died, and Francis Crozier, commander of the HMS Terror, was now in charge. A total of nine officers and 15 sailors had passed away, and in a last-ditch effort, the remaining 105 were officially abandoning ship to make a thousand-mile trek south to Bax Fish River Trading Post. At this time, while the graves in the note had been found, it had been nearly 15 years since Franklin's expedition had originally left England, and the rescue team still had absolutely no idea what had happened to the ships or the rest of the crew that had attempted the perilous journey across land. The mystery continued. Key to discovering what happened lied in the oral traditions of the native Inuit tribes of the land. Eyewitness accounts included several observations of the crew heading south through the treacherous conditions, and this information was passed along to English explorers. One of these Inuits had a face-to-face -face encounter with these men, with one of them in an officer's uniform by the description, shouting the word for friend in the Inuit language. Some believe this officer may have been Commander Crozier. After a short interaction, the Inuit provided the men with a little bit of seal meat, and they proceeded southward, dragging behind them small boats laden with supplies. One account was completely dismissed by the English at the time, which included stories of cannibalism by the starving crew. However, the story appears to be true when studies in the 1990s at one of the discovered camps did reveal the telltale signs of cannibalism. As for what happened to the ships, the Inuit stories tell us that one of the ships was crushed in the ice off King William Island and sunk. The other remained intact, was eventually freed of the ice, and set sail on its own as a ghost ship. At some point, some of the surviving crew may have boarded the ship once again, since some Inuit stories talk of smoke rising from the ship, possibly from the old coal furnace that was once used to heat the vessel. From where that ship is said to have stopped, footprints on the nearby land heading inland were spotted. What happened to those that they belonged to is still unknown. After more than 160 years of searching, the HMS Erebus was found in 2014 at the bottom of the Wilmot and Crampton Bay, 
and two years later, the HMS Terror was discovered just south of King William Island in Terror Bay. Of the 105 men who set out for Back River from the Stone Cairn, there are only 24 remains that have been found that are confirmed from Franklin's expedition. There are other remains that, if confirmed, would bring the total to 85, that still leaves 20 sailors missing. Ghosts in the Great White North, the ragtag remnants of a couple of ghost ships. And for more about strange and unusual phenomena, please check out our other videos off to the side. I'm Mike Ricksecker. Until next time.